Uh, dear professor, can you tell us something about your life and the reasons why you decided to enterprise your research? Yes, I'd be glad to tell you. I decided to s study biological systems a long time ago, around the age of uh, six or seven. But uh, I realized going up in a village in Israel, I realized that it's very challenging. I had the sense, it's not really use the word realize. And physics and mathematics, again, at the age of six and seven, you can't use the term physics or mathematics, but I was very attracted by the beauty of the theory and the formulation. So I decided first to study physics and mathematics, and only later in life to make the switch and move to biological systems. And when I studied physics, one of the things that I did is to try to solve the question of how patterns emerge in nature, in non-living systems. Uh, the endeavor took more years than I expected. Mm -hmm. But uh, once we reach some level of understanding, new understanding, uh, one of the uh, typical problems that the public uh, is familiar is the problem of snowflakes that you have uh, the atmosphere, it's cold, you have uh, water vapors, and then they solidify and you have these uh, snowflakes, which are very, very beautiful. If you look at them, they have very high symmetry and very intricate, sorry, intricate pattern, and they're very different one from the other. And there are many questions that people, when they look at it, try to answer. Eventually, we have succeeded. And once we moved past this stage, I finally found myself in a position that I can uh, contribute to the understanding of uh, living systems. The specific research on bacteria uh, was uh, for very simple reasons. What I wanted to understand is what is special about the human being, understanding the brain. But I decided that in order to understand the fundamental question of cognition, what is cognition, what is intelligence, what is the origin of the intelligence, I should start with the most fundamental organism. And bacteria are the most fundamental organism. And since bacteria do form colonies, which are very large, and they show self-organization, I decided to look at them and try to see to what extent they use the principles that we understood for self-organization in non-living systems and doing so to discover what are the special features or uh, properties of the fact that each cell, when you talk about bacteria, is a living entity. Mm -hmm. Later on, I give you brief uh, coverage of my research, uh, it took us again more than I thought. Uh, it developed a new strain of bacteria that were not known before that have special properties. They show very exciting social behavior, as strange as it sounds when you talk about bacteria and use the term social behavior, uh, but one can see in the movies what I mean by social behavior. And if you look at the pattern and you see these patterns, which is a very complex pattern, is composed of uh, many, many cells. When I may say many, many cells, the number of bacteria in this colony is, can be hundred, sometimes thousand times the number of people on Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, so we understood uh, the social behavior, we understood that each individual bacterium must have some cognitive functions. And they all work together and they all share messages, chemical messages that act like a language. Mm -hmm. And doing so, it occurred to me that we're now in a position that we can try and use some of the new understanding for a new look at the human brain. Mm -hmm. And the next step was to look at uh, networks of neurons outside the brain, live neurons, that also organize together, they wire together, and they start to show collective behavior. And we develop new ways to look at the neurons, 
to ask some fundamental questions if they, despite the fact that these are neurons which are outside the brain mm -hmm. and you put them on a plate mm -hmm. and they organize in a spontaneous way, the question was, can we look at the activity and see something which is not random? Mm -hmm. So they are born to show some regular behavior or some properties. And indeed, we succeeded to do it and to show it. And that came as a big surprise, not only to us, but also to people in neuroscience. And in order to understand it, that led us to another stage that uh, brought the research on bacteria closer to the human brain. And I have to share the audience with some element of knowledge, a new element of knowledge in neuroscience, that the brain of each one of us, you, me, everyone that's watching us, uh, usually we think that it is mainly made of neurons, nerve cells, the ones that fire electric potential and sense electric signals. And we have this notion that they are us. They are the ones that really process information, active, and we is really something like a computer, mm -hmm. that it has this neuron, which are like transistor that fire electric pulses and they communicate and so on. But this is not the right story. For 100 years, we've been missing half of the brain. What I mean by half of the brain is that in the human brain, and it's a special feature of the human brain, there are other cells, they call glia, comes from the word glue, and all over the years, people saw that the role is to support uh, the neurons, both to provide them with mechanical substrate to sit on, and also to bring them nutrients, and to take away the waste products. In the very last several years, about 10 years, uh, people started to understand that they play a very important role in uh, processing of information in the brain. The reason that the role was overlooked for so many years, when so many brilliant scientists studied the brain, which is the most challenging system, was that we could record the electrical activity of the neuron. The glia do not show, they do not fire action potential or mm -hmm. electric voltage pulses. What they do instead, it's something more intimate. They create waves of calcium chemical that propagate all over the brain from place to place. And I hope the audience can see the movie. Now, in the recent years, we can look at these waves because we have new technology to record the calcium wave by looking through fluorescence method mm -hmm. and special chemicals that can show us the waves. And thanks to this, we now understand that the neurons in the brain, uh, just to give an idea, in the brain we have about 100 billion neurons, about the same as the number of bacteria in a colony. Actually, in the colony there are more bacteria than neurons in the brain. Each neuron is connected to 10,000 to 100,000 other neurons, and they send electrical signal, the connection called synapses. Maybe I should share with the audience one more anecdote to give an idea of the complexity of the brain, and then I'll go back to the glia. Uh, each neuron is like a kid that has a cell phone, and about every second, or a few seconds, he sends SMS to about 10,000 to 100,000 other kids, and every second or few seconds he receives SMS from another 10,000 or 100,000 uh, kids. So I guess that even nowadays Italian kids cannot do it. Maybe soon, but not now. So this is to give you an idea about it. Now, there is another thing which is common to these uh, neurons and the Italian kids. If a neuron does not receive an SMS in two days, it dies. So it has to receive messages or activity in order to survive. But if it receives too many messages, it can be confused. So the role of the glia that we now understand 
uh, each cell, glia cell, sends many, many arms outside. They are called this specific type astrocyte because they are like stars. They send these arms. And each one is send this arm and wrap around 100,000 connections between neurons. And what they do, they detect how much information arrives to the neuron and it regulates it. If the neuron receives too much information, they uh, use the act as a gate and reduce it. If it doesn't receive enough, they create, they cause it to create pulses and feed it with information or pulses. And they connect between them with these chemical waves and this is, now we understand an important aspect of the human brain. And so this is more or less we finally in a point that we reached the human brain and we connected all the way from self-organization and pattern, uh, through bacteria to the human brain. Mm -hmm.